Uh, sure, if you would. Do that. hate me because I'm beautiful, but I'm going to stay on no video, guys. All right, well, let's get started. I really want to be respectful of everyone's time and keep this to an hour. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're, we're really excited to have you here and to talk about our strategic plan. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of start by, um, actually start with a story. Our, our founder, Alta Jensen, um, said just a few years after we had been founded that art in Utah would never be great or real uh, until it can be what it wants to be. And I think that is such a beautiful summary of what Umoka does, that um, it, it really um, invests in art and, and um, allows art to be real and to be great and to be what it wants to be. Um, in so much of this process, uh, we heard a lot of feedback from, um, from supporters and from allies who um, affiliated words like brave and bold and risk-taking uh, with Umoka. Um, and uh, we're really, uh, about, really appreciated our deep investment in makers and the independent voices as a crucial part of Umoka's history. Um, both past and present. Um, at Umoka, we really believe that art can create empathy and cultivate dialogue and, and ultimately make the world a better place. Um, so let me start first by setting a map for today's meeting. Uh, in presenting the strategic plan, we want to give you a few things. Uh, first, an understanding of what we did and why, and then and also communicate that we heard you. We, this plan comes as a result of so many conversations from so many different people that we heard you and that what we're doing is a result of those conversations. Um, I'll start first with introducing uh, members of the strategic plan um, and then we'll have a short 15 minute presentation, PowerPoint presentation, going over our process, introducing our new mission statement, introducing our five strategic areas of focus, and then our associated uh, 13 goals. Um, and then we want to spend the remainder of the time really hearing all of you and answering Q&As. Um, and uh, so that will be administered through the chat. Um, and I also wanted to point out that um, the Strategic Planning Committee is now is broadcasting all through various places in the museum that are often places that you don't get to see. Uh, Jared is at the, in the air studio. Um, Hannah is in the ed space. Zach Bale, uh, also on our strategic planning committee, is uh, in, in the curatorial room, uh, and, and uh, Derek Allen is in broadcasting from the boardroom. So uh, that's a great way to introduce who was on our committee. Um, so much of that committee was really informed by outside conversations and interviews, but we really steered the effort. So um, thank you all for being here, and I want to turn the time over to, to Eric to present. Thanks, Laura. And uh, I think that's a really great overview. And, and thank you to everyone who's participating today. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I hope you're able to see this fine. First of all, strategic plan. Why five years? Why fiscal year 2026? And we started with the question to ourselves of who is it that we want to be in five years? How can we define that? How can we look to who we are now? and think more broadly than just what we need to do this week, okay. this month, or this year. Things that we normally do with budgeting and shows and programming uh, to keep the doors open as we have for so long, but to say that if we overlay in an element of focus, of strategic focus and effort in a few different areas, we believe we can accomplish something more than just staying open, that we can expand the breadth and the depth of our mission, which is to provide art and be a pillar of the community and, and really be responsible for the trust that's been placed in us, both as an organization and, and specifically as, as board members of that organization. Now, uh, doing this, let's see if I can 
first needed to start with going out to the community, a broad group of stakeholders who have been a part of our organization in some way for so long, to ask them, how are we currently relevant? What is it that we can do better? And what opportunities might exist for us to do this? And in thinking about who would be best to answer those questions, we came up a list with over several hundred individuals and institutions that have a nexus to this organization. Uh, there was the obvious folks who were either current or past organizational links to the community, the donor base, members of the board and administration, uh, but also this grouping of our educators, artists, academia, uh, individual uh, members, influencers, and local decision makers within our community who are such an important part of determining how best we can contribute to local and regional culture. We narrowed this list based on who from those individual institutions uh, were greatly affected uh, or influenced the decisions that we made, who made those decisions, and in some instances who might uh, be opposed to some of the uh, evolutions we would propose as part of this five-year plan. As noted, we came up with a query that really focused around this question of, as stewards of cultural ideas, how can we reach more people, more simply, and in a way which cultivates a contemporary dialogue, coupled with half a dozen other questions that uh, really led to great interactions with a lot of individuals over the course of several months in the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020. Uh, the answers, the questions that we asked and the answers we received were not meant to be data driven. They weren't meant to support analytics. They weren't meant to be quantitative. They were meant to be qualitative. They were meant to speak to the way people interpret, uh, to the way they feel, the way they experience Yumoka, much the way people who visit our institution experience the shows that we're putting on. And we believe that through that, we would be able to identify common themes, which would become our street key areas of strategic focus, which they did. But as an important preparatory step to this, uh, and having heard things like Umoka is the presenter of new ideas, that we're a flagship cultural museum, that we're brave at the same time we're contemporary, we felt a strong need to restate who it was we are, how we accomplish what matters to us, and what we do it for. Essentially, we needed to restate our mission statement. And beyond the five-year strategic objective, this restatement of the mission statement that's, that is loud and proud in the meetings that we have as an organization that guides the decisions that we are making is really important. It's that Yumoka believes in the power of the art of our time. And that through programming, advocacy, and collaboration, we work with artists and communities to build a better world. At its foundation, our strategic plan is really this. We've defined who we are. We understand that in five years, we want the message of this statement to ring true, not only for those of us making decisions on a regular basis and trying to put on shows, but that some form of this could be the, the easy definition or answer that anybody could give to who is Yumoka. With that are five areas of strategic focus. We didn't know that there would be five. We didn't know if there would be two or three, but we simply couldn't refine the themes and recommendations and impressions that, that our stakeholder contingent had in less. The first is that we are visible, that we are seen both geographically and visibly as a, as a key component of, of downtown Salt Lake City and all that that represents, which is clearly much more than Salt Lake City. Uh, and, and that ties into being local and responsive, which is our second area of focus. Local, yes, in terms of this incredible artist community that is here now that we want to support, that exists, but also that Salt Lake's uniquely positioned within our region, beyond Utah and the Mountain West region, to have elements of culture which have both been influenced and will continue to influence uh, who we are as a larger community that Yumoka has a key role in that. 
that we are open and inclusive. We understand this to mean not just internally about who are we, who are we bringing in that maybe doesn't have the opportunity to be included in other institutions as much as they should, but what other groups and organizations could we collaborate with to ensure that this isn't just about who comes to us, but how we as an organization and the mission that we serve can be a bigger part of other uh, complementary organizations uh, in the Mountain West regional area. Fourthly, that we are responsible. It is not a small feat for any institution, let alone a contemporary art institution, to be able to say, we've been open for 90 years. We figured out how to make this work. We've dealt with the incredible challenges that every institution of our type and kind deals with, and we're still here, and we're still looking forward. We're fortunate to be in a position now that we can take that level of responsibility to the next level in terms of, of transparency, in terms of managing our fixed costs in such a way that our development efforts are focused on how better to apply an increase in programming to areas local and outside. And fifth, uh, probably most important in terms of our ethos of who we are is making sure people know we've been contemporary since 1931 despite the misnomer of looking back at history and when we're trying to look at the now and the where are we going in the future, we wanna make sure that in social media, in uh, how we tell the, the story of the art that's presented inside of our institution, that it does draw on clear links to our past and even how Yumoka has been an important part of that. Now, Areas of strategic focus is a great way for us to understand who we are and refer to when we might be making decisions, but we needed to be more proactive. We've identified 13 specific goals, each of which has a number of key performance indicators which you've identified that are measurable. So that as we meet collectively and apply funds and time and resource to each of these 13 areas, we can make sure we're being effective. That we can make sure we're being effective as it's happening so that we can make adjustments as needed. And, and at the end of each fiscal year, as we hold ourselves accountable, we can make sure we've accomplished the needs of the specific goals uh, as we move forward into the next year's efforts and ultimately toward the five-year accomplishment of each of these. I'll list these uh, in, in paraphrase. The first is to have co cohesive and concise branding of Umoka uh, to make sure that, that, that we are presenting ourselves accurately and succinctly in a way that reflects our, our mission statement. This is work that's already underway and is more evolutionary than revolutionary. Uh, secondly, and very specifically, that the first impression people have as they enter the museum needs to reflect that identity to make sure that they are ready and have transitioned from the world outside to the world inside the museum uh, and the individual galleries of what they're going to see. Uh, we're very pleased that we've made great progress to this end, which we'll be presenting in just a moment. But our lobby and our exterior presence is very important to us in, in guiding that experience. Thirdly, third goal, uh, improving Yumoka's street presence this is really continuing those efforts that have been completed inside of our lobby uh, out into the street. Now we're doing this thoughtfully. Uh, we have formed a, uh, a master planning committee to work closely with the county, with the local community, uh, with third party experts outside the organization to make sure we're thoughtful and how we do this because how we extend onto that street presence is also going to inform the larger street uh, life and culture that Salt Lake City is working so hard on right now, especially as we all get out and into the streets more quickly at the end of this year. Fourth, uh, contribute to organize strong exhibitions. Now, this concept of blockbuster we've identified as, frankly, a larger, expensive show. More often than not, it will be a show that's brought here from outside of our market, and it will take a lot of effort. But to to, to do that, 
alongside with showcasing our next goal, our local Utah artists and provide a platform for cross collaboration, for recognition, uh, for bringing people into the museum and also putting our local Utah artists uh, on, a, on a pedestal that's equal to uh, the relevancy achieved by some larger regional or even international shows. Uh, and increase collaborative approach to doing this to create educational and programmatic bridges that uh, we have the opportunity to expand shows that we do beyond the physical walls of uh, our institution and, and, and bringing those to our uh, artistic affiliates that are located throughout the state who we've collaborated with previously. And we see an opportunity through joint um, uh, curation and, and advisory efforts to take our mission of being stewards of the arts more broadly into their organizations as well. In terms of reaching individuals, this starts with the student population. We do a lot between family art uh, Saturdays and the art truck, uh, which was a fantastic contribution uh, made by a past um, executive director and board to how we're able to get uh, our efforts out beyond the walls of Moka. We want to be able to take that further and travel further distance. We want the, uh, the, the number of times we're able to take, touch each individual student more. And we also want to focus on how we reach them at older ages in the K through 12 system. Now, if you're like me, someone who appreciates the arts but doesn't always feel like they fully understand them, uh, stand it as well as they could. We want great programs for adults as well. Uh, programs that are stimulating academically and intellectually through panels and lectures, but also programs like art fitness, which help people understand how to think about, organize and understand art as a preliminary step to them viewing art in a newer and deeper way, which we know will lead to a deeper appreciation of it, and we believe will affect all members of our community more strongly uh, if they have that basic foundation. We see ourselves as having a very critical role in bringing that about. We talked a little bit about financial sustainability and greater organizational alignment. Again, this is not, uh, we are in a very good position right now. This is about covering uh, fixed costs in a sustainable way to make sure that our development efforts are focused on more variable costs and programming and shows. And this is something we've been able to accomplish uh, recently very, very well and in Europe. Uh, and financial support for participating artists. Part of what we do is not just putting on a good show, but making sure we're promoting the next generation of artists uh, and facilitating their efforts to produce and also showing and marketing and showcasing what it is they're producing through our artist and resident program. Uh, this is something that we have continued to set aside money, uh, time and resources, and also space within the museum, studio space within the museum to accomplish. And along this fifth objective related to who we are and our ethos and perception in the community, uh, making sure that we are perceived as an institution that is longstanding locally, especially as we grow to be a more white regional presence, and also making sure that um, key moments, historical moments that we've been a part of are, are brought up. We see our, our social media campaign as a key part of this. Now, that's a lot. Uh, 13 is not a small number. It's not even a number that is easy for all of us to keep uh, off the top of our, our heads as we're meeting. And that's where we've organized this sequentially over the course of five years my area of focus, those five areas of focus, to make sure we're spending the right effort on the right items at the right time. And that's because some of these efforts do require preparatory steps. Uh, some of them uh, have priority over others. And we've split these initiatives over the course of five years to be reviewed on an annual basis as we set annual budgets and appropriate uh, time uh, for our annual workings. Already underway, as you can see, our fiscal year 2021 began uh, at the midpoint of last year. We are well underway with the branding effort. 
our lobby renovations have been completed to the extent you haven't been here already to see them. Uh, they are truly great and, and, and make a profound statement about uh, the experience we want people to have upon entering. And none of that would have been possible without us having identified it as a priority and also uh, a very special contingent of, of donors and patrons of what it is we're accomplishing here who stood up behind us uh, to be a catalyst in this five-year effort that we've had. We also have our fiscal sustainability effort uh, is underway. We have uh, third-party uh, advisory services working with them on that, and we are excited uh, to be able to continue transparently posting our audits and our state of the organization uh, fiscally and not just programmatically moving forward. The plan itself is well over 50 pages with uh, appendices backing up the work that we've done. If you have interest in the query that we uh, produced, the, the groups that we've reached out to, how we conducted ourselves, or even the incredible amount of feedback we've received, it's there. Specifics on the uh, goals and how we are measuring those and hope to achieve them, costs of what it is that we're implementing, all of this is available in the full strategic plan, which is listed on UMOCA's website. Uh, we have summarized this in a trifold, uh, a physical copy that was circulated to our uh, many of our member base over the past several weeks. If you have not received one of those, they're available to you. And it's also summarized further in the press release that went out this morning. Despite all of our efforts to be organized, to stay organized, and and appropriate money and time towards being this institution in five years that we believe we will become, which is more broadly and deeper than it has in the past. It really all comes back to how we restate who it is we are and why it is what we do or what it is we're doing. It's that we believe, again, in the power of the art of our time. We do it through the programming through the advocacy, and through the collaboration with many other like individuals and institutions out there working toward the same end, which is to help us work with artists in our community to build a better, better world. And as lofty as that is, it's something that I've seen firsthand, uh, having been a participant on the board, and as engaging many of you through this stakeholder uh, initiative process, that is not only something we can it's something that we are accomplishing. Uh, it's something that each one of us should be proud of and appreciate, again, your time today to uh, let us tell you a little bit. Laura? Thank you so much, Derek, for going through um, our strategic plan. Um, and, and as Derek said, we have, um, we have tribal brochures that we sent out to everyone of our, on our member list. We have brochures available in our lobby. And uh, through the chat, we can send you information of, uh, on our media page where it can give you a link to our full strategic plan as well as the brochure and our press release. Um, I wanted to open it up to questions. I'm sure there's quite a lot. And from what I've seen, I think all of us, you know, when you're trying to Zoom uh, filter questions, I think what we've seen is the most efficient way to do that is via the chat feature. Um, so if you have questions, if you could send them via chat, we are really eager to answer and, and to really dialogue with everyone about this plan and, and to hear your feedback and to hear your thoughts. Um, the first question we received um, says, uh, who did you talk to in the community and can you tell me more about the interview process? Um, I'm wondering, Zach, as someone that was outside of the UMOCA, if you wanted to tackle this question. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to, to field it, Laura. Um, one, just a thanks to you all to join you as a learner, um, very much to be a part of the, the planning process. Um, so one thing I was really impressed with is just the, the, the breadth of intent of this. Um, it really was to go out and seek so much voice from the community and not just maybe voices that are content and uh, you know it, it, close to the current activity but also folks that um, may show a diversity of opinions so um, as Derek showed there was a list of a number of groups um, you know donors maybe donors that um, aren't currently connected so maybe you know there's some story there around how do we get folks reconnected um, individuals in our community that um, 
really are a part of laying the cultural fabric. Um, you know, probably many of us could think of who some of those those folks are, and some of the folks we interviewed are those kind of the you know the common names we might think of in our community. Um, but also, there were so many folks that um, maybe aren't the household name, but have so much wisdom to who um, Yumoka is to them. The process, uh, gosh, we came up with a whole bunch of names and narrowed it down, and it still was uh, tens of interviews that, that the group did. Uh, we compiled them. Um, the questions, maybe to, to highlight a couple of those, um, you know, a number of broad questions. When you think of Yumoka, uh, what comes to mind? That was one that really kind of a lot of richness came from that. Um, one around the cultural fabric of our community. Um, what, what role, what, how is UMOCA contributing was one of, one of the other questions. Um, and, and really just a, maybe a, a, a kind of a, um, a, a value question around, what, you know, what does UMOCA do? You know, when you look out and see in the community, what, what, where are they involved? Um, and a couple of the other questions that we, um, we asked, and, and the process was very much conversational. So for some, it was really kind of, going down kind of the, the, the great rabbit hole on a very specific thing. Um, a couple of other questions around just the role, you know, how, how, think of polarities with these. How does, uh, do, do we go forward both acknowledging the past but lean into the future? So there was a lot of rich questions around that. Uh, there were also questions around in this dialogue, um, how does the space both, uh, you know, provide a opportunity for engagement, both to uphold kind of safety, but also challenge in terms of being contemporary and being engaged in the conversation. So hopefully that kind of scratches the surface at um, much of the essence of the conversations. Maybe just one to close. I'm sure we, we, we all very much agree, just an immense thanks to everyone that was involved in the process. Um, there are so many individuals that provided um, their gracious time to, to help with this very much were the essence of um, it now being uh, in place. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Zach. Um, the next question we have is from Lauren, um, and it's about our, our branding. Um, uh, the question is, can you expand on the reference to our branding, and is this another name change? Um, and I wanted to touch base on part of that and then also turn the time over to, to Jared. Um, no, this is not another name change. I, uh, I, Umoka over our 90 years has shifted our name three times. Uh, I think we feel well settled into Umoka. But one of the things that we learned a lot from the strategic plan is that a lot of people wanted to attend and wanted to participate and wanted to be involved, but um, just weren't getting the message or weren't, um, the way that we were delivering it was ineffective or um, even um, our brand sometimes was fighting with that. So um, Jared, do you wanna to touch base for a minute about some of that, um, what's happening with the newly formed marketing committee? Sure. Um, so I think uh, the conclusions that kind of came from, from the discussion and the questions that we asked um, was that there was a, a shift from being the Salt Lake Art Center and almost, you know, like on a Friday and then on a Monday we were, were the Utah Museum of Contemporary Art. Um, mission stayed the same, ideas stayed the same, but there was a brand change. Um, and I think in that brand change, um, it sort of uh, separated the audience into the people who call it the Art Center and the people who call it Umoka. So I think the idea with the new uh, branding would be to, to maintain Umoka clearly because it, it does represent what we do and who we are as an institution. But um, to sort of uh, use it as an opportunity to think about how the people who still consider it the Arts Center can be brought along to understand or um, recognize the, the logo or the branding that we're doing now. So we've had the opportunity to work with a group out of Provo and their name is Actual Source. Uh, there are two uh, they're, they're a micro publisher, but they're also do a lot of branding and marketing materials for nation, uh, national companies and international companies. Uh, and they're big believers in us. Uh, they've actually had an exhibition here at the museum, I think back in 2015 under the name uh, number four. So what they did is actually come to the museum, uh, go through our archives and look back through ways that we branded ourselves in the past and um, 
at how effective those were or maybe not effective and use those as the basis for a new way of uh, sort of identifying what the museum is. So uh, we're currently in the process of narrowing down some of the suggestions that they've had or some ideas that they have. Um, and for us, what we want to do is, is use the, the branding and the, the logo and the word mark and the recognition uh, as a benchmark for where we want to go. Uh, and, 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 um, and I think, think about the logo as a way of reflecting a lot of what's in this, the strategic plan. Yeah, thank you. I, I think so much what we, the desire there is to bring um, people along and to, um, to really um, kind of gather everyone that's been invested in us uh, as an organization. And some of that will be manifested in some of our 90th anniversary celebrations or the exhibition that we have planned that, that harkens back to what we were doing well in the past and kind of brings it to the future. Um, another question we have is what are we doing right now, especially during COVID to fulfill our strategic plan? Jared, I'm also going to turn this to you because um, it, it's programmatic. Absolutely. Yeah, happy to answer that question. Uh, you know, when almost, what, uh, one year ago, uh, we got the notification that we needed to shut down to maintain safety for the community. Um, and it, it, it clearly threw us all for a loop because we had programming set up for the next year, next year and a half. Uh, so we had to come up with ways that we could still um, create programming because we do feel that even in this time when we can't go to a museum or we can't do, we can't visit a lot of places, that art needed to be seen. So we actually looked back at past programming that was done by Nicole Hebron. Uh, it was called Lawn Gnomes. And it was a community-based, uh, basically sculpture garden, if you want to call it that, that existed throughout the state. So uh, we invited artists to create artworks and put them in their front yard. So if people were outside going on a walk to get a a reprieve from being at home that they would be able to see art and talk about it. Um, that was one of the, the programs that we put together. Um, another is um, we did some online programming with Alex Caldiero, who happens to be one of our, um, you know, he's shown at the museum four times throughout our history and we're doing a retrospective right now that just opened up last week. Uh, we did some poetry based work and performance based work with him. Uh, we were able to partner with The Open Room, which is an artist-run DIY space in Salt Lake, to do a video, uh, to do an outdoor video installation that was participatory, that was done safely. Uh, and then just most recently, uh, because of our schedules have sort of had to shift around to be able to accommodate those shifts, we've constructed a new gallery within the main gallery called The Exit gallery, to say that word three times, uh, uh, that is set aside so we can maintain our commitment to artists that we made pre-COVID uh, to be able to exhibit their work. So we'll be running artist in residence uh, exhibitions in there currently. Uh, and, and, and right now we have Zachary Norman in the airspace and we have uh, Catherine Knudsen in the uh, exit gallery. Great. Thank you. I think you know so many people are pivoting with uh, COVID uh, right now, um, but uh, it's been important for us to really actually still maintain and still launch this long five-year plan um, with with uh, with our future in mind. Um, you know, one of the questions we had was uh, in response to um, uh, uh, our financials um, that we have had. Uh, uh, Sarah asked about, the, we've had some financial issues in the past, and what are we doing now to make this strategic plan a reality? Derek, do you want to tackle that question? You know, I spoke to it a bit already, so I won't take too much time on this. But in short, I think there was some perception that maybe our, our fiscal house wasn't in order or is in good shape as it, it could have been. The reality is that we have been able to uh, cover our expenses, we've been able to stay open, and we've been able to do this for a very, very long period of time. Uh, our, our fiscal position right now is one of having uh, reserves. It's one of having paid down uh, all short-term debt. Uh, it's one of being funded through programming uh, for the upcoming year. And it's one that allows us to focus on how to appropriate monies toward those development goals and objectives which will bring about greater programming. You know, this is clearly uh, shown in our audits uh, that come out every single year uh, that we are uh, 
uh, a good going concern and uh, that we are able to continue functioning as an organization. I think if there's any specific questions related to that, uh, we'd be happy to take those on outside this call. But in short, uh, it is really difficult to, to pay for and fund and support institutions related to the arts. And I don't think we could be prouder about the position that we're in and how careful we've been with our monies and how proactive we've been, especially over this year with COVID, uh, to make sure we are well positioned to ramp back up to full activity uh, just as soon as we're able to do so uh, safely and to even uh, extend programming opportunities while being shut down, as, as Jared just mentioned. So uh, I think anybody would be we're in a good spot now and we are well poised to capitalize on the enormous Great, thank you. And I just did want to mention that our audited financials are public information and that you can find those on our annual report. Um, and or if you have some specific questions, we really are happy to, to talk with you. Sure. Um, uh, Adam, Adam asked a question about our mission statement, and I'd love to talk to, uh, talk a little bit about the change in our mission statement. So our mission statement previously um, uh, had a line in it that said, as Utah's own or sole contemporary art museum, and one of the things that we found, even in doing this research, we looked back at, at how that mission statement came about, and there was a 51% um, opposed to, to, to having that line in, in the statement. Um, and, and we felt like it, it, in some ways, started off the conversation in some of it in a debate, whether we were or not, and, and that it just felt like a really off topic um, uh, uh, kind of introduction into us. It was important for us, first and foremost, to state why we do what we do and um so that mission statement that we believe in the power of the art of our time i think we all uh you know as a team and as we shared it broadly all really identified with um with with that really forefronting the work that we do and, and then why we do it or how we do it with um you know advocacy and collaboration um and uh and, and in partnership excuse me, in partnership with other artists. So um, that, that was the, the reason for the change. And also I think it was important to make it shorter. We, you know, so that we all could walk out and, and really have it memorized and have it be part of our everyday life. And, um, you know, it's, it's on every press release. It's, it's on the top of every board agenda and on the top of every staff meeting agenda. So it's really more integrated into our culture. Um, I, would, I would add to that, Laura, that it's important to know that our mission didn't go through a wholesale change. This is just our statement. We didn't say it as well as, as we felt like we needed to and, and, and as much as we deserve to because it's a great mission and, and we feel like we better accomplish that. Yeah, yeah, that's great, thank you. Um, uh, Joseph Uranker, he asked, when you, you're talking about collaborating with and uplifting local artists, how does Yumoka see itself connecting with those creatives? In particular, how are you planning to cultivate relationships with those who are not already within Yumoka sphere and those not operating within conventional institutional circles at all? That great question. Uh, I, I read through it quickly, but it's in the chat. Um, I want to tap, tap Hannah and uh, Derek, or I'm sorry, Hannah and Jared to answer this. Jared, do you want to go first? Sure, I'm gonna also reread the question here. Uh, you know, I think this is one of those uh, questions and, and I think that came up quite a bit in the surveys. You know, our name clearly does say the Utah Museum of Contemporary Art, but I think um, if you look back, uh, a lot of the exhibition programming specifically was pulling from national and international artists. And uh, there was a small commitment to local artists uh, and that and that has sort of shifted throughout the years, but uh, what what we believe in is that we do have a strong arts community here, and that we needed to find ways to support them. So, um, you know, some of the things that we've done in the past and are now looking to expand upon uh, is an artist in residency program. We have the art truck. Um, we're looking to sort of ex expand what the mission of the projects gallery is. Currently, it's just for Utah residents, but we are actually starting to look outside in a, in a larger radius there. Um, but to get to like the heart of your question, uh, I think what, 
what we need to do as an institution and um, and and make a better point of these things, and I'm I'm pointing at myself actually in this, um, is making sure that I'm out in the community more and I'm going to visit these places and I'm making connections with people that uh, run those institutions or those things that exist outside of what's what's traditionally an institution. Um, you know, we've we've been able to do small things with small groups, but they still have been kind of centrally located in Salt Lake. So, um, uh, you know, it's going to come down to to a presence in the community. It's also going to come down to uh, more of a collaborative effort between exhibitions department and our public programs department. Um, you know, we are we are a, a small institution with a small staff. Uh, so um, when we talk about collaboration, that also has to ha happen within the museum and not see those two positions as operating separately, but functioning together. Uh, so that's, that's from a programmatic standpoint, uh, I think that's on my plate as something to do. Yeah, and Hannah, do you want to talk a little bit about the Greater Utah show that we have on the radar for 2023? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I was thinking about is that there's a sort of an express part of the strategic plan that talks about there's this come came from a request to uh, sort of continue the commitment to local artists but also a request to sort of expand and include the rest of the state and the rest of the region and as a you know part of a part of that response uh, was the Greater Utah Show, which is an or the organization of a statewide show, um, which will you know sort of specifically specifically respond to that criteria. So it, it's expansive, including those people. And I'll also add, you know, I think this came up in conversation a little bit during the entire strategic plan development that uh, talking to these community leaders, I see a couple of them on the screen, right? Talking to these community leaders in rural spaces and places uh, outside of the Salt Lake County, um, you know, is part of of in initiating that network and I know Jared is in touch with many of them but sort of renewing that commitment and there's criteria within that statewide show that's like Sorry, I think our internet connection uh, got a little fuzzy there for a minute. Um, did, did the signal break up for everyone? Uh, can you nod your head if you can hear us? I wanna make sure that we are moving forward or I don't know, do the wave sign or something. Okay, great, you can hear us. Um, uh, so uh, can't, thank you, thank you, Hannah. Um, Essentially, just to summarize or kind of reinforce what she's saying, the hope with that Greater Utah show, um, and actually Peter, uh, Peter is on our board. Um, Peter, do you want to jump in a little bit and expand on that um, just uh, for another minute or sure. two? Well, I could say, first of all, um, Peter Everett, I'm an artist and a professor at Brigham Young University, and I'm on the board. And back to the question about how is Yumoka reaching outside of Salt Lake City to involve uh, Utah? Um, as an artist who's been in, in Utah, but out of Salt Lake City for the last 20 years, I think there are more artists in Utah Valley that have shown at UMOCA than any other institution in the state. So I think there's a perception um, south of Salt Lake City that UMOCA is a real anchor and champion for contemporary art in the state. Um, there's usually um, artists outside of Salt Lake City in the exhibitions at UMOCA. And then the, the Greater Utah Show, which is kind of modeled after a similar kind of a curatorial outreach in New York City where um, PS1 Contemporary, which is now owned by MoMA, does a survey of the Greater New York area where they'll bring three or four curators to do studio visits with artists in the Greater New York area and then curate a powerful exhibition. So we talked about that along with um, a California model that was called Pacific Standard Time where multiple institutions collaborated to create 
a survey of the state of arts in, in, the Cal in, in California. But this idea of having a real curated exhibition that perhaps um, partners with other institutions in the states or in the state, which gives um, a stronger platform and voice for artists in Utah, and maybe even um, partnering with institutions where we bring curators and critics from out of state to see the show and create some momentum to magnify the voice of all the wonderful artists in the state, in Salt Lake City and um, around the state. Is that Laura helping? Um, and I apologize, our connection is spotty right now. Um, I wanted to, to uh, go to the next question, uh, which I think is really great, is, is Cameron Archibald's question about um, what are uh, your plans or what support do you need from the community or partners to ensure 2020 is, 2021 is productive and engaging despite the challenges we continue to face? And thank you so much, Cameron, for asking that question. I think, um, you know, it's definitely been a difficult year and we have been supported through CARES dollars and, you know, through UDAM and ZAP and uh, um, a lot of government agencies uh, stepping in with additional uh, support. Um, but as you know, last fiscal year, we had to cancel our uh, annual gala in June. We were able to host it in, in October, but it meant that we went a whole fiscal year without a gala. Um, and that that's a major fundraiser for us. So you know, uh, gifts, gifts do matter uh, and they do support and do help us uh, move forward with the work that we do. Uh, Derek or Hannah, is there anything you wanted to add to, to that, um, to Cameron's question or, or, or anyone on the committee? Zach or Jared? I would offer that at its simplest level, simply being aware of Umoka, coming to Umoka, seeing the work, and and really letting it be a part of, of your life will not only enrich you, but it will encourage other members of the community to come and participate. We are truly a mission-driven organization, and yes, fundraising is critically important to what we do, but also reaching you and your contingent is just as important. So I think that's a great way to support uh, the organization. Yeah, well, I, I think that we've covered nearly all the questions. Um, are, uh, is, uh, actually, all of the questions. Are there any additional questions through chat that you want to send through? We will wait one minute. Um, and just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Um, and, and thank you, Emily, for accolades uh, and excitement for our show. We're looking forward to partnering with organizations like you and, uh, and like you, Dan. Um, thank you all for your support and your investment and your belief in Umoka, having you all here. Um, you know, I think everyone is tired of Zoom, but having you, you know, really be willing to Zoom over your lunch hour um, to hear our strategic plan um, that we we put in a lot of time and a lot of thought and, and really tried to hear you. It, it's so meaningful. Um, we just want to, uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming and thank the team, uh, the committee for your work. Um, and then, and then just restate that, that, you know, we really believe in the art of our time and, and, and believe that it can build a better world. So looking forward to, to doing that together and doing that with you. And uh, thanks so much.